He is. He used to love this race. He still loves this race. But his confidence, I think, for Mickey Grice has dropped a little. And that's so important in biathlon. Simon Ada started eight. And he's gone off like a whippet out of the stadium. Trying to catch, get onto the heels of Mickey Grice, who started five seconds in front of him. Simon Hallenbatter, the best of the Swiss, yesterday starts nine. Yanis Maritz goes at 119 for Slovenia. Seven nations in the top ten starters, despite the fact that the first four were all Norwegian. Now, tactics between these two. Bjorn Dahlen is uh, very tactical. Berger, ferociously competitive and will want to get into the range first to prove a point. Does that open it up for Halvard? It could do. I mean, there's Harvard. He's, uh, he's losing time, so the pace has been strong. I think that he's probably just being disciplined. He's thinking about the shooting more so than the skiing. I think Shudov will be the one to move forward if any of the chasers, the early chasers. Alexander Oss looking very smooth on the skis, very little movement, good uh, abdominal or good core strength, I think you would say nowadays from Oss. Shudov's tucked in behind him, having started four seconds behind, Shudov's put on a little burst, and uh, I think what he's doing here, Mike, is trying to uh, protect himself from the wind. He is. Look at this, uh, Bjorn Dahlen breaking his, his usual, his normal. He normally starts so careful. He's uh, done something different today. He's, uh, he's gaining time on all of the chasers, and he's got rid of uh, Lars Berger already. Going through number six is still the Frenchman Foucault. We'll get his time in a moment. He started 50 seconds down on the leaders. Number eight there is Simon Ada, who settled down after an initial burst, trying to catch Mickey Grice, but uh, looks as though he's decided that would not be a good idea. Now, what has Grice got to do, Mike? The Germans really didn't do too well in... Uh, the German males, I should say, didn't do too well in Ostersund. They were desperate to do well here in Pyeongchang. It, it doesn't look good for them. Seventh, Mickey Grice. Uh, Roosh, as you said, 14th. And uh, we have to go back to 22nd to find Stefan. And then Alexander Wolf. Uh, 54th. He took a medal last year at the World Championships. Well, as you say, Mike, Bjorndalen is pushing this pace. Berger hasn't gone through, and I think Berger may be deciding that he wants to protect himself. The wind is a problem, and uh, there are one or two straights where it's very strong indeed, and anyone who's skied or run or paddled into a wind knows the difference between being in first place and second. It, did, it was lovely looking at the different styles there. Lars Berger, he has the, the longest glide, I think, in skating, skiing, and that's in the cross country world as well so he was doing one stride to Bjorn Dallin's one and a half well those two have taken 10 seconds out of Hannevold already Alexander Oss started 25 seconds behind and he's lost time as well now 35 and uh, Bjorn Dallin as you say has gone for completely different tactics uncharacteristically he's uh, unless we have the chasers being disciplined it's a long haul and it's one of the toughest course profiles this is the difficult part for uh, some of the women earlier this morning. Yeah, that's how to ski it. Bjorndal and confident enough to do, uh, do a little step turn. or a sk It's uh, halfway between a skate turn and a step turn round that corner. But that shows that he's not phased by the downhill section. The ability and the confidence to take your weight completely off one ski and then place it down on a new track. And I think that what we saw there with these two amazing skiers is the, the, the fearlessness. They, they weren't tense. They were just letting it run and reacting when there were issues. And there are issues issues on this track, it's lumpy, other tracks are in the way, I thought they took a wrong turning there but of course they come under the bridge and into the range. So here we go, first shoot in the men's pursuit, the lead in the women's changed with every single shoot. Will the same happen with the men? Bjorn Dahlen coming in first. Berger will be alongside him. Hannevold and Oss will take their positions on the firing map before the two leaders have cleared it. The wind blowing, Mike, and uh, pretty much the same as in the women's, but the feature here is the gusts. It, it, it absolutely is the gusts. That's what caught a lot of the women out. Uh, neither of these athletes have changed their sights. So they're thinking it's the same as it was in the zero ring just 20 minutes ago. First miss for Lars Berger. Is Bjorn Dahlen going to clear the five? He does. My goodness. Now, that might explain the tactics because maybe he thought Berger has uh, got less chance of hitting the targets than him. If he uh, opens up a gap, Berger misses. He's suddenly going to find himself at least 20 seconds clear. It could be 40. Depends what happens now. Hannibal, Shudov, Oss all on the range. The Russian sandwiched in between the two Norwegians. Fokade has uh, come in as well. I think Fokade's going to medal today.
the Frenchman starting sixth. What about Hannibal? Great start. Oh, yeah, he's going to be. Hannibal's just going to keep the discipline, I think, on the range. And that's where, in these conditions, medals can be taken. Well, considering the wind conditions, that is wonderful shooting by the leading four. Three of them have gone clear. Only uh, Berger has missed targets. He's going to be a bit shocked to see himself going down into fourth place when he comes out of the range. Focada working from right to left. Mickey Grice getting ready to go. Not a good start for Focada. Two misses out of the first three shots. And uh, that medal is going to be hard to come by now. Mickey Grice taking much more time than uh, normal. And it pays off. Simon Ada, Mike, <laughs> is rattling through them as if it's a fair stall. Ah, the last shot. He often misses the last shot. I think it's because he's almost back on his knees <laughs> before it's hit the target. You have to let the shot out of the round exactly before you move. Roche has gone. Derry Zemlier has cleared as well. And good shooting from Thomas Shakura. Watch out for Shakura. He was so disappointed with his result yesterday, finishing 16th. The only bit of good news for Shakura was he was back on top of the World Cup standings with Svensson not racing. So uh, his lifetime's ambition, he's achieved it twice in one year. It's quite, quite amazing, quite outstanding. Looking at Mickey Grice there, Bjorn Dallin has taken 16 seconds ski time prior to the range in only four minutes. So Bjorn Dallin is on fire absolutely skiing best of his form this year well what does he do now he leads the way 30.9 clear of Hanoel shoot off of Russia in third place at the moment well, welcome back to Pyeongchang we're going through a little bit of deliberation here you can see Bjorn Dahlen is clear you can see from that initial shot that he started with glasses on and Mike has picked out that he might possibly have left the glasses on the range and that would uh, incur a disqualification. We've already had one dramatic disqualification today in the women's race. Are we about to see another? It, it, it does incur a, a, a penalty, certainly, maybe even a DQ. I, I just hope that he was clear from the range before he threw it off, but uh, certainly he came in with the glasses on his head and he left the range area without them. Sharp observation there. We'll, uh, we'll obviously pick up on the leader in short time. We'll just catch up on those chasing at the moment. Mickey Grice over a minute behind uh, at the last count, and he's done nothing to improve that. The old Grice grimace is back. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I just wonder whether that's a sign that he's struggling or whether he's just, uh, as always, going 105%. Uh, yeah, well, we saw that at the Olympic Games when he was at his best, three gold medals there. He doesn't quite look... I mean, you have to pace yourself up this incredible climb. But compared to the Bjorn Dahlen dance, the bound, the leaping, Grice isn't in this kind of shape. Well, he is after something today. This is an incredible ski so far. And uh, hey-ho, presto, there are no glasses on his head. So he's lost them. The question is, are they in the range area? And will the officials pick up on that? It uh, certainly would be very, very cruel to disqualify a man who uh, not only has his reputation, but is uh, also in a position to win the gold medal here. And it would make two in two days. Are we going to see a repeat of uh, Salt Lake City? <laughs> He's just looking so good right now. Of course, this is Hannevold chasing. But, uh, yeah, but Bjorn Dahlen, he's, uh, he's in that zone where he's at his best. And especially that first uh, 2.5 kilometres to destroy the rest of the field, like, except for uh, Lars Berger, by so many seconds. It really has set out a stall for an amazing ski time. There's well, he's taken another 16 seconds. Sorry, Mike, but he's taken 16 seconds off Hannafold since they left the range. So in 1.3 kilometres, he is flying. Shoot-off and the Oss were 40 seconds behind. They're now 44, 45. He's, he's on a mission. He's Fourth. absolutely flying. And Berger has lost time to Bjorn Dahlen as well. Berger's lost another nine seconds. So Bjorn Dahlen's uh, skiing almost a, a penalty loop faster than any of the best of the rest per lap. Does he need to do? that he's just and this is the strength of this unique man he's uh, when he wants to bring something special to, to to the party he can to the races and and for all these medals he's one he's able to do that so often and that's where only a few athletes can do that once or twice in their career this man can do it regularly now we know he's focused on the next olympics to uh, next year 2010 in uh, vancouver we've heard that he's uh, also planning for 2014 when he's had this shoot Mike maybe you can explain uh, the mentality of someone who wants to go that long in his career <laughs> not many would know 
better than yourself. So, Bjorn Dahlen with the possibility of maintaining a lead of 45 seconds. The wind has dropped away compared to where it was last time. Low right. And that looked to be a left uh, hit in the left side. Slightly unusual routine for Bjorn Dahlen. Well, he's gone low left on that one. Now, the uh, caption has left them standing. Has, uh, is that two penalties, Mike? They seem, that last one certainly seemed to be uh, almost a prone hit. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's uh, a little surprising. But uh, there they are, the second time into the prone position. But uh, Bjorn Dallin, the wind did... Uh, have a look at the flags again. The wind has dropped away, so he did miss to the right and then he missed to the left. Well, Hannevold has missed his first shot as well. And Berger has thrown one wide. Now a chance for Oss and Shudoff to come through. Oss is shooting very quickly indeed and could put some pressure on his teammate. He does. Five out of five for Oss. Shudoff with five as well. Hannevold has one penalty loop. Berger has another three at least. He may have four. Oh, no, he gets the last one down. So, Berger is uh, now really struggling to uh, stay with the top three. Bjorn Dahlen is out. That lead of 46 seconds is cut to 4.6. The price is skiing too hard, or possibly uh, he skied hard to ensure that he would still lead if he missed two. <laughs> it's a difficult one to, to, to analyse. He was certainly, a, a, it seemed to be at a higher level than he ever normally comes into the range, and that's why Bjorn Dahlen hesitated trying to get the breathing back. Thomas Shakura is one of the movers and shakers in this race so far. He hits another five out of five. He started 16th. He's going to get himself uh, at least 10 places higher than that as he comes out. Forcada goes clear, Mike, and the two Forcada brothers racing alongside each other at the moment. Uh, the older one with the lead. Shikora up into fifth position. Now, that's brilliant news for his medal hopes. It's also great news for his chances of retaining the yellow bib in the World Cup. Simon Eder, the Austrian, it was fast again, and he got five this time. He missed the last shot, the last time in. Well, he started eighth, and he may well come out in the top ten, having dropped outside the top 15. Tim Burke of the USA had a good run yesterday, Mike, finished just outside the top ten in 11th place. But remember, he was ninth in the sprint in Ostersund last year. So Tim Burke's one of those athletes who rises to the big occasion. He does. He always does. And, and an incredible result yesterday from, uh, from FAC, the Croatian, he trains with the Slovenians, St finished in, well, 15th he came yesterday, and it's still going well today for him. So Bjorn Dahlen leading, 4.6 seconds ahead of Oss and Shudov. Now, let's see if we can see where it went wrong for Bjorn Dahlen. Well, he looked, clearly took a, a second or two to have a look at the flags, check the wind out. Remember, he went so fast the last time, or the previous two times up these hills. He's, he came out of the range 4.6 ahead. He's extended that a little. Well, the tempo is uh, significantly higher than everyone else. That 4.6 is growing. Shudoff is being patient behind. I think Shudoff is one man who could keep pace with uh, Bjorn Dahlen, but he's not interested at the moment. He wants to save something for the last lap. And the question is here, Mike, if we do have uh, a head-to-head -head situation coming off the last shoot, will Ole Aina have anything left in the legs at all? He's pushing himself. But look at in yellow, Bib 14, uh, Shakora is having a fantastic...